Hello. I would like to say a few words why Eastern Christianity matters even now for our days. That it is not just uh, an object of interest for archaeologists, for the students of, of antiquity, that it is relevant to our days, to our societies, to our churches. Um, when we look at the current developments in Europe and elsewhere in the Middle East, in Africa, uh, in the areas uh, where Eastern Christianity was historically present and continues to be present, uh, we can see that the conflicts in those areas, and those conflicts include wars, like the war, ongoing war in Ukraine, uh, or the war in Georgia that happened in 2008, or uh, the war in, um, in Tigray, in the Horn of Africa, or the war in the Middle East, in Syria and elsewhere. Uh, all those uh, uh, conflicts and wars, they are to different degrees underpinned by, uh, by the traditions that are present uh, in those areas because people who uh, participate in those wars in different ways, in different roles, either by uh, uh, supporting those wars or opposing those wars, uh, they uh, affiliate themselves with, uh, with Eastern Christianity. Therefore, to understand uh, those uh, wars, one has to take into consideration <coughs> uh, the Christian tradition that uh, is there to people who are involved, who are present there, uh, in those uh, in those areas, uh, one would say that uh, uh, those wars uh, consist of uh, uh, yes of weapons of violence, but also of ideas, and many of the ideas uh, stem in different ways from Eastern Christianity. They stem either in distorted ways, uh, as a sort of deviation from uh, the normativity from the orthodoxy in our lexicon uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, our, of our theology, or uh, some prophetic voices are heard against those wars that also stem from the same tradition, from the same Eastern Christian tradition. So uh, that's uh, another uh, reason why to study Eastern Christianity. Uh, a very particular aspect of Eastern Christianity is relevant to, uh, to these situations. Uh, it is called uh, political theology or public theology, and it has to do with the role and the place uh, that the church has in the public square. <coughs> Even though the phrase public square is, is new, uh, was coined recently, a few decades uh, earlier, but the church has been present in the public squares since its beginning. Probably the first example, the first case of such a present of the church in the public square was uh, Paul's, Apostle Paul's um, uh, um, uh, visit to, uh, to Athens when he on his way to Areopagos, uh, the place where he addressed the Areopagites, the members of the, of the council, of the Athenian council, he uh, uh, strolled through, uh, through Agora, the marketplace, the Athenian marketplace, the, the place where all the interactions between the citizens of Athens took place. And Paul became a part of those interactions. He addressed uh, people in that public place, uh, in that public square, and explained uh, to them about Christianity. That was probably the first encounter of the church represented by Paul as its apostle um, in the, uh, with the square, which was not particularly ready to, to, to listen to him, uh, was not particularly ready to accept his message, and yet eventually uh, um, that square converted to Christianity sometime, some centuries after Paul. So after that, a long journey of Eastern Christianity uh, in uh, its relationship with the state and the society began. 
uh, Eastern Christianity, of course, for most of its time, uh, was relevant, was related to the Eastern Roman Empire, either by being included in that empire or being excluded by that by that empire. And this, the latter, uh, uh, relates to uh, to the so-called Oriental churches, the churches that flourished outside the Greek or Roman world, in the Syriac world, in the uh, in Africa, um, represented by the Coptic, uh, the Wahedo traditions, and so forth. Uh, so, this relationship with the empire uh, shaped uh, in different ways Eastern Christianity. But even after the fall of the Eastern Roman Empire, which happened in the uh, mid 15th century, uh, uh, the successors of that of that empire, either it was the Ottoman Empire, which claimed some suc succession to the uh, to the Greek or Roman world, uh, or the Slavic, uh, new Slavic empires, the, the Bulgarian, the Ser Serbian empires, and later on the Moscovite state and, uh, and Russian empire consequently, they succeeded the Roman empi empire in the way how they treated the church, how they related to the church. And uh, uh, in, in a sense, what is going on now, even after some of those empires collapsed, uh, still, is influenced by the historical memories about the imperial past, uh, imperial past, uh, uh, which is still somehow relevant for for those churches. The churches struggle to deal uh, with with their past, their imperial past. They either uh, reject it or accept it or try to uh, try to elaborate on it. Uh, in any ways, it is uh, it is always a difficult, sometimes painful process. In our school, uh, we try to study the churches in, uh, in the public square. We try to study the churches in their relationship to their past. And we try to uh, help uh, theologians and future leaders of those churches to deal with their future, to, ca to carry out uh, the, uh, their understanding, their knowledge about Eastern Christianity to, to the future of those churches, to uh, make this, this, this future better than uh, their past was, to overcome uh, the preconditions that uh, had led to the wars and conflicts uh, that I mentioned in the beginning, and to, um, uh, uh, to envisage a new future uh, for the churches, uh, a future without the those strings attached to, to the past uh, in, in the sense of the, the, the kind of the unsuccessful uh, pages of the churches, as ch uh, churches past, uh, and to um, uh, draw from the successful pages of the churches past. That's why we study uh, our past, uh, the past of the Christian tradition, with the idea not just of uh, studying it for the sake of the you know, academic interest, but also in order to design uh, a brighter future for the church, to deal with the current problems, the problem problems of the present. So our studies of the past, our archeology, span so to say, uh, uh, is not self-sufficient. It aims at um, making uh, the life of the churches uh, today more relevant to their tradition, to the call of Jesus, and uh, to the call of, uh, of their own people. Uh, the um, uh, students in our classes, they learn how to listen to the, to the uh, voice of people. We believe that Vox Populi is often Vox Dei, the people's voice uh, often represents what God's uh, what God wants about uh, uh, about uh, his church so that is um, uh, that is the dimension in our studies in our school which is very important for us the dimension that uh, starts in the past goes through the present tries to bring some solutions to the present and continues into the future our purpose, our goal is in the future, in the future of the church, in the future of the people uh, of the church, in the future 
of our students.